Welcome back, I'm Robert Belgrave, CEO of Wildhome, and here we are for our second video all about infrastructure auditing. And today we're going to drill into one of the areas we talked about in our first video, which we hope you enjoyed, which is the all important people in your organisation who are involved in the process. And so let's talk about the people, the all important people who make infrastructure tick within your organisation because it's so easy to become fixated by the technology and understandably technology is of course a key part of what we're focusing on when we're doing an infrastructure audit but it's only half the battle because without bringing the people along for the journey you'll be met with resistance along the way and any change you need to make as a result of the audit simply won't be possible to implement. So let's talk a bit about that. Remember that people always have an agenda and I don't mean that in a negative context it's just how people are. People will be thinking about how this process might impact their personal profile within their organisation, how it might impact their career. Let's say they're concerned that a decision they've made may have been the wrong one, uh, or maybe they want to make sure that they're given the recognition they deserve for a great decision that they've made. Be mindful of that agenda that people will have and, and try and unearth it as you go through the process by talking to them. I think the other key thing to remember is that change is hard. We're built to resist change as human beings. and People won't be doing it consciously, it'll just be, for a lot of people, that kind of starting position that they'll be approaching this with. So manage that change, facilitate it, communicate, almost over-communicate with people and make sure that they understand what you're doing, that you're not here to make their lives difficult, and that ultimately, you know, the success of this process will be better for everybody and for the business as a whole. So how do you bring people along for the ride? It's all about making sure that you facilitate change. And this is a model that I've used for a number of years, which I found to be very effective when thinking about change of any type in an organization. So I'm gonna draw it for you here and talk you through it. Ultimately with change, there's kind of four different categories it can fall into. Is something unfacilitated or is it facilitated? And is something undesired or is it desired? The way to think about this is that Let's say, I don't know, maybe you wanted to completely remove the staff benefits that you have in your organisation. If you were to do that without explaining to anybody why you were doing it, quite clearly it would be an unfacilitated change that would not be desired. People like benefits, right? Anything you do that falls into that bracket of this quadrant will be an absolute disaster. If you have undesired change that you don't take the time to facilitate, it, it's just going to be a train wreck. If you have changed, however, that one undesired is facilitated, let's go back to my analogy, you know, if you were to remove everybody's benefit, but there was a reasonable justification for why you were doing that, and you take the time to explain that to people, e.g. facilitate that change, you move it out of that death zone, if you like, and, and into a, you know, a sort of manageable area, uh, and things will probably go a lot better. Alternatively, if for some reason the change is desired, difficult to think of a desirable reason why benefits might be removed, but let's assume that maybe the existing benefits package is a nightmare and everybody actually wants salary instead of benefits, that would be a desired change. And in that context, you wouldn't need to facilitate that change for it to be successful. It would probably be okay. But the sweet spot and the area that you should always be trying to get every single change you make in an organisation into is this, this top right area of the quadrant, which is both facilitated and desired. And that is something that is much easier said than done. But as you're going through the journey of an infrastructure audit, and particularly the kind of end phase where you're making recommendations and, and, and implementing the, you know, the changes that you might see as a result of them, try and get them into this place where they're being well facilitated and that the organisation desires them. And getting that desire is something that requires great communication and making sure that you've been open and honest with everybody all the way through. Um, you know, being mindful that people will resist change and uh, you know, again, people will have their own agendas and their own ideas about why you might be doing a process like this. So yeah, communication is key and try and get to this facilitated and desired change for everything you do. So how do you make sure that everybody feels like they're being included in the process and get the best insight you can from the individuals involved? stakeholder interviews. Absolutely key part of infrastructure audit. Again, easy to become fixated by the technology. You must take the time to listen to the people 
and understand both their perspective, their content, and also their experience of working with the technology you have in your business. We recommend doing this in a very structured and disciplined format. Come up with a kind of crib sheet of questions that you'll ask every single candidate you sit down with and go through a half hour to an hour long session with each of them one by one, asking the same questions and recording the answers in some sort of spreadsheet or document so that you can collect that information at the end. Explain to them why you're doing that. Explain to them that everybody's being asked the same questions and so it feels kind of neutral and that there's no bias or agenda in the questions that you're asking. And always have a kind of open phase at the end of the interview for a bit of back and forth and Q&A and, and you know, a great question would be, what's the one question I haven't asked you today that you feel would be relevant? So go through that process with each candidate and then once you've got all that insight together, take the time to look at it objectively kind of put it all out on the table in front of you, maybe even work with somebody who wasn't involved in the interviewing to review the data and start to look for the patterns. You know, we've been doing this process for a long time with lots of different businesses of all shapes and sizes, all the way from FTSE 100 down to small independents. And there's always a pattern in what you see. And it's amazing how quickly you can get a pretty good feeling for where an organization is with its technology and some of the key areas that you need to focus on. And actually we found if you start with stakeholder interviews before you dive into the technology, it's often quite a good kind of canary in the coal mine in terms of understanding where you should be looking and perhaps some of the areas that require a little bit more digging than, than kind of a, a quick glance. So why would you do an infrastructure audit? Most of the time it's driven by the desire to reduce the cost of technology in your business. And in our experience, you almost certainly will achieve that as the result of doing this if you do it properly. Doing it properly in this context means not just fixating on the technology, but thinking carefully about the impact it will have on your people and facilitating the change that will come as a result of going through an infrastructure audit. So let's remember, people will always have agendas. They will always be resisting the change that's going to come from this. Be mindful of that throughout. Think about facilitating that change. Think about making that change desired. Remember the quadrant that we showed you and use that to kind of text to the information that you're sharing and kind of over communicate in the areas where you feel you might need to. And last but by no means least, stakeholder interviews. Make sure you run a consistent and properly managed stakeholder interview process where you're objectively reviewing the data you, that you get from that with each individual and that you're sharing that feedback with them so that they understand what they're doing what the agenda is ultimately and why they're taking the time to go through what can seem like quite intrusive questioning uh, as you go through those interviews. The one thing I would finish on is just by reminding you that making sure that you have someone who's truly objective can have a huge positive impact when it comes to getting value from something like this. In our experience, you really either need to use somebody who's not well known to everybody within the business or maybe a third party because that kind of neutral position, that Switzerland if you like, that can come in and, and kind of get everybody to open up a bit more without that preconception of how somebody might interpret the information really makes it easier to get the outcome that you're looking for. Thank you for watching our second video about how to get value from an infrastructure audit. Please keep an eye on your email for our third video where we'll be talking you through a couple of examples of projects we've undertaken with the likes of Shortlist Media and the British Red Cross and sharing some of the value that they managed to get from running this process effectively.